Hello, my name is Junaid Sariyuddin. I'm a theater actor, director, and dramaturg, a co-founder of uh, Zukak Theater Company based in Beirut, Lebanon. Zukak is a theater company founded in 2006. Uh, we work as a collective, and our work uh, focuses on the uh, political and social issues that are relevant for us as individuals living in the contemporary world and contemporary societies. Uh, today, uh, we are happy to share with you one of our creations, Janna Janna Janna, or Heavens. Heavens is a play uh, we created in 2014, and um, it's a play that focuses on the question of uh, the Lebanese history. Uh, and uh, this play uh, is part of our research uh, our cycle of research on history uh, in general. Uh, in this play, we question this idea of uh, history and our position as individuals uh, within the huge events of uh, history that have uh, usually a huge impact on our lives. Uh, we, as a generation who was born during the Civil War, uh, in Lebanon. Uh, the Civil War started in 1975 and continued till the 1990, 1991. It, uh, it, the closure of the war was a uh, big amnesty law signed by the warlords who are still in power till today, until today. Uh, um, the amnesty law has, is still uh, uh, part of our daily life until, until now. Uh, it's a, it had a, a big foundational uh, impact on the system that we live in today and the mentality that we have to deal with it on our daily, in, in, in daily basics. Uh, the civil war ended with uh, uh, more than 17,000 missing people and because of this amnesty law, the beloved uh, families and parents and friends of the missing people are not allowed to even question their right to know what happened and what, what was the destiny of the uh, missing uh, during the civil war. Uh, today, uh, we are sharing with you this play, the, actually the radio uh, version of this play. Uh, it was recorded in 2016, and uh, the actual play toured in Lebanon uh, in different regions and villages around Lebanon and in different cities outside Lebanon. And also the radio uh, version uh, toured uh, digitally in different online platforms during the uh, latest pandemic uh, lockdown that we faced uh, all over the world. We would like to have you after the play, if you have time, to uh, join us in the panel discussion. If you have questions, we will be very glad to share with you thoughts and think together through this play about theater and politics uh, in our contemporary uh, difficult times. Thank you so much, and uh, we hope you enjoy listening to Janna Janna Janna. Fi, ya, ma fi, bhazzamain al-mektifi. Ibn ammu, bayo jindi, u huwe mektifi. Fi, ya, ma fi, bhazzamain al-mektifi. Fi, ya, ma fi, bhazzamain al-mektifi. ابن أم بي وجندي وهو مختفي في يا ما في بهالزمان المكتفي في يا ما في بهالزمان المكتفي الابن انخطف بالتسعين طالت على أمه السنين البي الجندي ضلوا عايش لعمر الوحدة وتسعين 
في يا ما في بهالزمان المكتفي في يا ما في بهالزمان المكتفي ابن انخطف بالتسعين وطالت على امه السنين البي الجندي ضلوا عايش لعمر الوحدة وتسعين في يا ما في بهالزمان المكتفي في يا ما في بهالزمان المكتفي بس خلصت الحرب لقى حاله بلا حياة قتل مرته من الحيرة وما طول لهو مات في يا ما في بهالزمان المكتفي في يا ما في بهالزمان المكتفي بس خلصت الحرب لقى حاله بلا حياة قتل مرته من الحيرة وما طول لهو مات في يا ما في بهالزمان المكتفي في يا ما في بهالزمان المكتفي بيت كان فوق صخرة بيقطع من قلب البحر وكل الناس بيقولوا من هون بيجي السحر من هون بيجي السحر في يا ما في بهالزمان المكتفي في يا ما في بهالزمان المكتفي في حكي في بكي في سما مجعلك في حكي في بكي في سما مجعلك في طايفة وفي زعيم مجرم حرب مستقيم في طايفة وفي زعيم مجرم حرب مستقيم في مواطن وفي شعب تيقبل تاريخه صعب في محاور وحوار في ثورة بالجوار في منطقة وفي حي وبلطجة ضمير وحي في ميليشيا اسمها حزب وفي حقايق كلها كذب في بحر بقلبه غاز وستة بتمسح بالكاز في بحر بقلبه غاز وستة بتمسح بالكاز في عنصرية على البنجالة من ابن عمه لخالة في عنصرية على البنجالة من ابن عمه لخالة في لجوء وفي عبوء وفي انتحار بالسوق في جريمة إخبارية بتحرف كل الخبرية في مغارة وفي سفارة وسياسة ناطر إشارة في أفلام بتتقصقص وحرش مسكر عقصقص في أفلام بتتقصقص وحرش مسكر عقصقص في إسرائيل بر وجو وفي إيران طف الضو وأمريكاني حكمه فاني وسعودة مشتري جدودة ومسؤول أيامه معدودة وبعد نام التزم حدودة في أرجيل بتوصل قبل وفي وضع واقف عحبلة وشافه صفة حد الحفة وشاب اللاط معه نتفة وموكب عم بيلف اللفة وشغالة فرقية الزفة وما خلصنا هلأ من كفة في يا ما في بهالزمان المكتفي 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 في تلاتة واقفين وقوف والقصة نصة محزوف تاريخ هو المخطوف ممحية أغلب لحروف في يا ما في بهالزمان المكتفي 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 في يا ما في يا ما في في يا ما في في الإنسان القديم عايش هون من مئة وثمانين ألف سنة 
مستشفى الجامعة الضوء أسرع من الصوت مطار دمشق أف أف بي آه منك يا غزيل آه يا غزيل يا غزيل ميل حاجز البربارة بليلة من دون ضوء أمر البلد على كف عفريت الأزيفة يلي بتسمع صوتها ما رح تصيبك بوش مع نيناكس ما في ميتين قتيل ب 83 بتفجير انتحاري استهدف مقر المارينز حد بيروت وتبنته كذا جهة معمل البيرة انقطع البنزين من البلد الله الوطن العيلة الله أكبر المطران الأحمر الرجال بلا كرش ما بيسوى قرش ساحة النجمة النشيد الوطني خلفتني امي بال 2014 23 شباط بالماتيرنيتي فرونسيز على طريق الشام يلي صارت خطوط تماس انا وعم بخلق انا اصلا اخر ولد خلق بهالمستشفى المستشفى عم تتفضى لانه المنطقه عم تنقصف ما بقى فيها غير امي والساج فاما اصلا من انا وصغيره بحس انه لازم احكي فرنساوي بطلاقه اكثر من العربي لانه خلقت بالماتيرنيتي فرونسيز القصف شغال والمستشفى فاضي امي نامي على التخت عم بتركز على انه تخلفني والدايه حطت لها موسيقى كلاسيكيه فيفالدي الفصول الاربعه لي كاتر سيزون فيفالدي Le printemps. على فيفالدي ومش سامعة صوت الهيونات والأزايف والأم 16 والكلاشينات وناطرة إن إخلا. بسرعة. أمي بتقول إنه كانت أسرع ولادة بالتاريخ بعد ما خلقت بتضيفها الداية شوية ويسكي بشاط شربوا ويسكي سوا وقالت لها بعد ما خلصنا لازم تنطري تا ينزل الكيس بتعلي الداية في فالدي وبينطري عشرين دقيقة بيكون ظهر الكيس وبيوصل جد ركض على المستشفى تحت القصف حرب ال14 ما كانت حبه وقفتين جدي كان اول واحد بيشوفني بعد امي والدايه بيحملنا هيك بيطلع فيي بيدمع وبيصير يبكي امي بتقول انه لما خلقت كنت كثير حلوه فكرته امي عم بيبكي من الفرحه انه خلقت بالسلامة بهيك اوضاع وانا اول ولد بالعيلة مثل كاني اعجوبة بهذا النهار العكر لبعدين لفهمت انه كان عم يبكي لانه انا بنت مش صبة <تصفيق> ما انت رجال انت مش بنت <تصفيق> هيك كنت تقلي ستة انت رجال انت مش بنت كان قصدها انه هيدا مديح كانت تحب اني طالعه قويه وشغيله مثلها <تصفيق> هلا ست ام جميل كانت شغله مره طويله عريضه عضمه تخين بتفلح بالارض فلاحه
أنا مايا أمي سمتني على اسم قصيدة لنزار أباني بتقول إني رفعت الراية البيضاء سيدتي إني رفعت الراية البيضاء سيدتي بلا قيد ولا شرط بلا قيد ولا شرط ومفتاح المدينة تحت أمرك ومفتاح المدينة تحت أمرك فادخليها بسلام فادخليها بسلام جسد المدينة جسد المدينة فادخلي فادخلي من أي باب شئت من أي باب شئت أيتها الجميلة أيتها الجميلة فاتوا الإسرائيلية على بيروت من البحر كان صار عمري سنة طولت تأفهم شو يعني اجتياح خلقت ب 15 أيار 2014 بالجامعة الأمريكية أمي قضت عشر ساعات عم تخلفني وبتقول إنه شافت الموت يعني النفق الطويل والضوء الأبيض بآخره ومن وقتها عرفت إنه رح أطلع صعبة وقوية لستة بس ما عرفت إنه رح أطلع عمثلة هلا هي سنة ال14 ما كانت هينة كان كل شي عم بحضر للسنة يلي بعدها الاجتياح الإسرائيلي لبيروت الغربية المدينة حاصرة من البحر الطيران عم بيقصف من الجو طرقات كلها زبالة وكلاب وعملية الوينبي بالحمرة دغري حد بيتنا أهلي حامليني وعم يركضوا فيي من بيت لبيت وشاعر اسمه خليل حاوي انتحر أنا ماما ما خبرتني شي عن ولادتي بس بتذكر لقيت دفتر بخزانة بابا مكتوب عليه كل تواريخ ولادتنا أنا وإخواتي مكتوب دانو عشرة تموز 2014 الساعة 8 الصبح أنا كمان ممثلة وذكرتي كلها صور ولادتي متعلقة بصورة لما صار عمري السنة بال1991 بالملجأ ببيروت بالصورة كان في تانت سعاد هي جارتنا بالطابق الثالث أمه لخالد كانت واقفة وحاملتني وحدة في طاولة عليها جاتو بونجوس وكبيات بلاستيك وصحون بلاستيك ورا الطاولة في ابن خالتي وخالتي وإخواتي وتيتا وكان في ماما واقفة مدة إيدها لعندي وعم تضحك بابا كان عم ياخد الصورة كانوا لابسين هيك فساتين رفاع وطوال مثل تفريعة يعني إنه ملجأ ورطوبة وشوب تانت سعاد لابسة واحد فلوري وماما لابسة واحد كارو بني وأبيض بالصورة كان مبين على شفافهم عم يتحركوا كأنه عم بيغنوا سنة حلوة يا سنة حلوة يا سنة حلوة يا دانو سنة حلوة يا في صورة تانية كنت واقفة وقدامي طاولة السفرة مدورة هون واقفة اختي عم بتزقف لي وتطقش لي تقرقص وهون اختي التانية صوب الجاتو لتطفي معي الشموع كان بوقتها ماما تعمل لي شعري هيك بالصورة كانوا كمان عم بيغنوا 
سنة حلوة يا جميل سنة حلوة يا جميل سنة حلوة يا دانو سنة حلوة يا جميل في صورة تلتة كنت أنا وإخواتي بالصالون قاعدين على الكنباية وحاطين إجر على إجر وقتها ديوني صينية فيها بريق وفنجين بلاستيك فصرنا نلعب إنه عم نعمل زيارة ونشرب قهوة أختي الرابعة كانت عم بتصورنا سنة حلوة يا رجع الأصانة ونزلنا على الملجأ خالد ابن لتانت سعاد كان قاعد بالزاوية بالملجأ وعم يسمع أخبار على الراديو لما سمع اسم شارعنا لأنه البناية انقصفت صار يزقف بعدين قلب الإزاعة حتى يسمع برنامج الأبراج كان يحب صوته للمذيعة كان يشبهه لصوتي لبيروت من قلبي سلام لبيروت وقبل للبحر والبيوت لصخرة كأنها صباح الخير وجه بحار قديم صباح القرنفل والغار هي من روح الشعب خمر هي من مستمعينا مثل كل يوم عرقه بتلاقي اتصالاتكم جرب جاوب حسب الكواكب فكيف حسب النجوم طعمها واحيانا حسب الطقس كمان طعم نار ودخان اتصلوا فينا على الرقم التالي لبيروت 01 82 مجد 76 75 من لبيروت من ده من لبيروت بتلاقى اول اتصال حمل فوق يدها الو اطفأت مدينة قنديلها مرحبا مدام تفضلي اغلقت باب مايك لم يا ابي عزار اصبحت في المساء عم بتصل بخصوص مستقبل ابني وحده يحيى هو مخطوف الله يرده سالم يا ام يحيى لبيروت مخطوف من امتى؟ من قلبي يحيى انفقد الاسبوع الماضي لبيروت من يومين تبلغنا انه مخطوف وقبل قديش عمره يحيى هلا؟ البحر والبيوت 17 سنة هو مواليد 5 حديران 1973 العمر كله تخبرينا عن آخر مرة شفتي كنت عم بعمل له تبولة بالمطبخ روح الساعة 11 الصبح ب 15 سنة 1991 طلع باب المطبخ وقال لي انه ظاهر يشتري علبة دخان فكيف ومن وقتها ما رجعت شفته تكون صريحة معك يا ام يحيى شهر نيسان صعب فلكيا انت لي رصد حركة الكواكب آه ما بتكون واضحة لانه طقسه متقلب ويحيى من برج الجوزاء وحدة من مواصفات هيدا البرج هي الطوق للحريه هيدا الشي رح يصعب عليه تجربه الخطف يمكن بعد اسبوعين او ثلاثه توضح اكثر هالحركه ونقدر نعرف شيء طيب مبين معك اذا صحته منيحه مش عم يتعذب لبيروت في عالم محبين حواليه من قلبي حاضر يحيى هو أصعب سؤال اليوم بدك تعتبري أنه يحيى مثل نجمة مخبية ما قادرين نعرف ولا شو في حواليها 
ولا وين مطرحه لصخره ما قلنا غير منطق وجه هي اسالك بعد سؤال تفضلي يحيى مقدم على كليه العلوم روح الشام ببين معك اذا في قبول يا من مولود برج الجوزاء بحب التعلم والاكتشاف مسألة الجامعة منا بعيدة أبدا عن يحيى فكيف خير حسسني قلبي إنه خير أنا بتشكرك يعني في أرجع أتصل بعد أسبوعين أكيد أتصلي بتمنى بوقتها إنه الفلك يسمح لي أعطيك أجوبة أوضح من دم لولد حمل فوق يدها أطفأت مدينتي قنديلها أغلقت بابها أصبحت في المساء بال1991 دقوا على بيت طنط سعاد وأخذوا خالد على برج المر طنط سعاد ركضت على البلكون تيتا فتحت الباب وشافتهم عم بيجروا على الدرج من نقزتها غط على قلبها اليوم صار عمره واحدة وأربعين سنة سنة حلوة يا جميل سنة حلوة يا جميل سنة يا حبيبي سنة حبيبتي تيتا روز يا شو بدي خبرك أنا منيحة بطلت مثل بس بعدني بدخن علبتين دخان بالنهار وبشرب أنين تجن إذا ما بمسك حالي وبشوفك بقيامي هون وهنيك مبارح قطعت بالبلد حد البطركية الأرمنية شفت بنيتين كبار عم بيتعمروا بساحة الدباس حد مفرق بيتك يلي تهجرت منه بالوحدة وتسعين ورجع اشترى الحريري مع البلد وهدمه الحريري مات مبارح بعرف انه ما بحياتك حبيتيه من ورا بيت الدباس اللي اخدوا منك وعطاك اسهم ما بتسوى شي اي بعدن ما بيسوى شي بكرة بي طالع الشام ما رح يقدر يوصل على حلب لانه حلب محاصرة صار له سنة تقريبا اخر مره طلع جرب يفتش على بيتك بس ما لقى بتعرفي بس اسمع وشوف شو عم بيصير بسوريا بقول لحالي منيح انه يحيى مش هون تيشهد هيدا الشي لانه ما كان رح يتحمل كل هالوحشيه زعلت انه ما شفتك اخر كم سنه يا ستي صار لي من الوحدة وتسعين بس بعرف انه ما كان بدك حدا يشوفك هيك تعبانة انا صار بدي اربع اجرين تأمشي يا ستة انت اللي كنت تطبخي للكل تعملي لنا فطاير ومشاطيح تبعتيلنا البرغل والسماء والزعتر بالصندوق على بيروت تعرفي هول الاشياء ما بيجي عبالي ابدا اشتريهم من السوبر ماركت بحسهم بلا طعمة لك ما انت كنت تاخديهم معك بالشنطة على امريكا بتعرفي يا ستي اخر سفرة سفرت على امريكا ما كنت مع جوزي مثل ما خبروك كنت لوحدي وانا اجمالا كتير بسافر لوحدي وبس سافر كون عم بعمل مسرح يعني عم مثل تمثيليات 
وخبر قصص قدام الناس هلا وقف تمثل بس ولا مره فهمت ليش كنا مضطرين نخبي عليك كنت حس انه انت بالذات لازم تفهمي هيدا الشيء يمكن لانك منعتي امي تغني مع بيت الفليفي الله يسامحك على كل حال انا مبسوطه هيك يا ستي ومرتاحه انا منيحه بعدني مثل ما انا وقف التمثيل بس بعدني بحب امشي ضليت كذا سنه امشي كل يوم نفس الطريق اطلع من البيت لجنانه الصنايع امرق حد بيا الدخان يلي مبسط بوجه الوزارة انزل من الاتوال وفوت بشارع الحمرة لف على اليمين من المتكة لسوبر ماركت دريس امرق حد مستشفى الجامعة توجعني بطني من ريحة المستشفى وصل على الأفران الوطنية محل ما كنا نشتري خبز صغير للشاورما أنا وياك وقف اشتري حي الله شي بس تعامل محطة انزل الدرج الطويل مسرح بيروت تمثال عبد الناصر الكورنيش ارجع اطلع على كليمونسو مسرح المدينة وارجع على البيت بس جابوكي على البيت كانوا لافينك بكفن أخضر لما كشفوا عن وجهك فتحت عينك شوي كنت كأنك عم تغمزيلنا أنك منيحة هالنسوين حوالينا بالضيعة مسيطرين على كل المراسيم قال ما بيسوى نبكي فوقك ما بيسوى دموعنا يدقوا بجسمك ما بيسوى نعلي صوتنا بالبكة وأكيد ما بيسوى نلحقك على الدفن ما النسوان ضعاف قدام الموت بركي شي وحده غميت ووقعت وانكشف فخادة كيف بدو يحملها شي رجال عيب انه انا ما بتخيل مثلا انه انت كنت معقول تغمي من الزعل شي مرة او انه تزعلي اذا بينوا فخادك وركابك شي شوي لك ما انت الحجاب كنت تلبسي اصلا رفع عتب بحاصله لحقناكي انا ونبيلة وودعناكي من بعيد هو كانون صعب على الختيارية راس السنة ورا الباب والعاصفة قريبة من فترة قطعت بحمدون حد الأوتيل يلي قضيت فيه شهر العسل انت وجدة سللت بالدمار وشفت البيانو يلي عزفت عليه يا بنات اسكندرية ليلتها كان مغبر ومكسور شوي بحمدون 1991 حفلة راس السنة زينة كوتيون كبيات بلاستيك وبونجوس وجاتو ومعجنة أسمار اللونة على دلعونة وعلى دلعونة بي بي الغرب الوطن حنونة ولا بدي أمي ولا بدي بي بدي حبيبي أسمار اللونة على دلعونة وعلى دلعونة ابن خالتك كان معه القرن ولا بدي هو يأسف ويغني ونحن نروس حبيبي أسمار اللونة وعلى دلعونة وعلى دلعونة بي بي الغرب الوطن حنونة بعد سنة نلعب طاولة ولا بدي بي بدي حبيبي أسمار اللون وبرجيس وعلى دلعونة وعلى دلعونة راحوا الحبايب ما ودعونا بعدين ابن خالتي ترك القر ولا بدي بي وصار يرقص حبيبي أسمار اللون وعلى دلعونة وعلى دلعونة بي بي الغرب الوطن حنون 
ولا بدي امي ولا بدي باي بدي حبيبي اسمر اللون على اللون على اللون فتت رصاصه من الشباك مرقت حد خلت مرقت حد امي واحدة وتسعين ترابلوس عيد ميلاد خي الصغير كان صار عمره ست سنين بي بيروح يجيب الشموع للجدو بيطلع بالسيارة هو وعمي وبيمشوا ما بيسوقوا ميتين متر وقفهم حاجز طيار بينزلهم بيتركوا عمي وبياخدوا البابا من وقتها ما رجعنا عرفنا عنه شيء من كم سنة في واحد كان مفقود رجع طلع كان بالحبس قصدناه وفرجيناه صورة البابا طلع بيعرفه أكد لنا إنه بعده عايش اليوم خي صار عمره 29 سنة ما بيتذكروا للبابا كان عيد ميلاد زواجنا الثاني راح يجيب لنا فرقيع من حد معمل البيرة في عالم شافوه عم بينحط بصندوق كاميون وطمشين له عيونه وعم بيضربوه وساقوا فيه بس الوجهك يا قمر بالصابون والحجر وينك يا قمر ومشت شعرك يا قمر والمشكل حل تسار وينك يا قمر من فترة اتصلوا فيي من طرابلس وطلبوا مني فتش على اسمه بالسجلات رحت ومشيت شعرك يا قمر فتحت كل السجلات انا وعم فتش على اسمه ماهر محمود قصير جورج مخيل للأزة بسام رياض مسلم سمير مخيل الحاج شامل حسين كنعان سامي حسن حميدي نبيل جرجي سمعان شكيب اسعد ظاهر محمد علي حور وانا عم بقرا الاسامي تخيلت انه بكره بس يرجع رح نتمشى تحت الشتا بسوق الروشة ونروح ناكل فول ببرج حمود ونحضر شوشو بمسرح البيكادلي ونتعرف على بعض من جديد ونعمل عرس تاني وغسل وجهك يا قمر بالصابون والحجر وينك يا قمر لي ابراهيم السباك ومشت شعرك يا شكر الله مسعود توما جون لياس جرماني جرجي مالك حنا جوزيف لياس لحوي ميشال لياس ابو الخليل ومشت شعرك يا توني يوسف مطر فؤاد حسين بيان محمد جميل عباس فادي اجود ضو وليد عمري محمد سعد الدين الشعار نجيب يوسف الجرماني محمد علي وفيق بكره بس يرجع جريس نمر جريس رح نروح على سينما الريفولي موسى عباس بره محمد عباس بره عماد نروح على سوق الخضره بالبلد خالد ابراهيم العمري ونطلع من البحر على الجبل من بس ساعه محمد علي بريطع شت علينا بالغابة علي احمد الحجاري عيط لكل الحيوانات اهلا بنو عنا مزرعه طانيو الشرب الزغير محمد عيسى كفاره عصام علي المصري 
وسام محمد حسن العمار والمشط الحال مكسر وينك يا عمار وفيق مصطفى اسفر وغسل وجهك يا عمار ابراهيم خضر عظيم حجار وينك يا عمار فهد عبد الكريم بز ومشت شعرك عاطف عبد الباقي رح اعمل له حفله براس هاي زي عبد الباقي ولو بنص السنه رح نعزم كل الاصحاب رح نفتح ايمن الوسكي الكبير يلي بتشبع المدفع سامر ايمن الحاور رح تسكر وتشرب وتطلع الضويه وكلنا رح نزقف لك محمد تعاونك يا قمر بطرس فريد خوان وغسل وجهك يا قمر بصابوني الحجر وينك يا قمر كلود حنا الخوري ومشط شعرك يا قمر والمشط الحيل مكسر وينك يا قمر يوسف حنا يمين وغسل وجهك يا قمر بصابوني والحجر وينك يا قمر ومشت شعرك يا قمر والمشت الحي مكسر وينك يا قمر وغسل وجهك يا قمر بالصابوني والحجر وينك يا قمر ومشت شعرك يا قمر والمشت الحي مكسر وينك يا قمر حبيبتي تيتا وغسل وجهك يا قمر بالصابوني والحجر بالعشر سنين يلي سكنتن بإيطاليا كنت عايشة بمدينة حلوة كتير بس كل الوقت كنت حس حالي عايشة بديكور سينما مش بالحياة الحقيقية وفكرت فيك كتير كيف انت كمان قضيت عشر سنين من الحرب بامريكا وعرفت تحبيها حتى انه علمتينا نغني نحن وصغار امريكا امريكا لاكويلا المدينة اللي عشت فيها بإيطاليا تهدمت كلها بزلزال قتل تلاتين ألف من سكانها ما حسيت بشي وهلأ شو ما صار ما بحس بشي كل العائلة صارت بأمريكا يا ستة ورانيا ما بعرف امتى رح ترجع على دبي وانا بضل مسافرة غراضي بضلن بالشنطة بحس حالي عايشة بالمطارات بصير فكر فيك اوقات كيف كنت تروحي وتجي على امريكا لوحدك عن جد انك قوية حاسة اني مش عم بعرف اقعد بمحل واحد يمكن انه ضلني مسافرة هي الطريقة الوحيدة لابقى هون تعرف تيتا قضت آخر خمس سنين من حياتها عنا بالبيت بالآخر تعبت كتير كانت أوقات تسأل عنك وينه زكور ضلت لسنة الألفين تعطيني ميتين ليرة تأشتري لأضامة وأتشبرق بالباقي مرة لبست كل تيابة على آخر طرز حملت جزدانة وقفت على الباب وقالت بخطركن قلت لها لوين تيتا قالت لي رجع على البيت قلت لها خالتي باعت البيت من خمستاشر سنة ما حست بشي أنا اليوم واقفة بنفس المطرح مثلها أنا مرة عراسة سلة عنب بإيدي جزدان برادا عخصرة وزرة ويترس ببار بجميزة عظهري 
ג'אוזה. עקחלה חלחל, עג'רד דנה, עבלה בוזה, ביבלה אבנה, עראסה חטה, עחדה שהווה, עשערה חנה, עטיזה חכנס, בילבה רסור, בווג'ה חכייה, ברעבתי ג'רימה, באידי מחבס, בג'יבתי מלבס עקדאמה, עקטפי חריר ג'בל לבנן, עבטני לבטה, בדהרי ביה, עסודרי עבאה, עסודרי באה, עסודרי אבנה. عصدري بلاطة عصدري وشم قلب مكسور بصوتي رجة بدينتي شمطة عدقني دقة عالساني مسبة مرحبا يا خي مرحبا يا دانيا مرت خي كيف كنت أه... انا مشتاق لكم كثير والله أه... مشتاق لك يا امي أه ما بعرف كيف هالغربه معكم بس أه... هون بلد مثل ما هو عم تركت ايدكم ماشي يعني مثل ما عم تسمعوا بهالاخبار شوية اشتباكات و العالم يعني عايشة في شوية ازمة خبز بس انه ماشي الحال اه انا ماشي حالي بعدني بهالبيت عم جرب ما اتركه منشان ما يحتلوا ونخسروا الجيران هون تلات ارباع مفل اه بس اه ضلهم بيت بو سليم تحت امبارح كنا عاملين حفلة عندهم و <hesitation> وتذكرتك خي بهاي الغنية كنا نغنيها سوا على راس السنة <hesitation> جنة 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 تسلم يا وطنا جنة 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 تسلم يا وطنا يا وطن يا حبيب يا ابو قلاب الطيب يا وطن يا حبيب يا ابو قلاب الطيب حتى نارك جنة حتى نارك جنة 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 تسلم يا وطنا يا جنة 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 تسلم يا وطنا يا وطن يا حبيب يا ابو قلاب الطيب حتى نارك جنة حتى نارك جنة جينا 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 نحميك بايدينا جينا 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 نحميك بايدينا همت السعادة بكل قرية ومدينة همت السعادة بكل قرية ومدينة جنة 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 تسلم يا وطنا جنة جنة شمعة 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 كل بيت في شمعة 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 بكل بيت في دمعة يا وطن يا حبيب حتى نارك جنة حتى نارك جنة
جنة جنة جنة تسلم يا وطننا جنة 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 تسلم يا وطننا يا وطن يا حبيب يا أبو قليب الطيب يا وطن يا حبيب يا أبو قليب الطيب حتى نارك جنة حتى نارك جنة 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 تسلم يا وطننا جنة 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 تسلم يا وطننا يا وطن يا حبيب يا أبو قليب الطيب يا وطن يا حبيب يا أبو قليب الطيب حتى نارك جنة حتى نارك جنة Good evening, everybody. Welcome and thank you for joining us uh, for the panel of Heavens by Zukak Theatre. Uh, my name is Nico Bukhari. I'm the co-artistic director and co-founder of Besna Theatre, a British-Romanian political theatre collective. And we're currently coordinating the Blood uh, Political Theatres and Civil Rights uh, online platform, uh, which is a fortnightly online platform presenting political theatre from around the world, hosted by HowlRound Creative Theatre Commons. Um, so before we begin the panel discussion, um, I'd just like everyone just to quickly introduce themselves. Um, and how, how about we start with you, Junaid? Uh, sure, thank you. My name is Junaid Saridin. I'm a co-founder of Zukak Theatre Company, and I'm an actor, a theatre actor, director, and dramaturg. Okay, thank you very much. And you, Maya? Hello everybody, um, my name is Maya Zbib. I'm a theater maker and I am a co-founder of Zukak Theater Company. Incredible. And uh, how about you, Chris? Hi everyone, I'm Chris Thorpe. I'm a writer and theater maker and performer from the UK. Um, and I've had the privilege actually of visiting Zukak and spending time with them a couple of times in their home city in Beirut. Thank you so much. And it's an absolute privilege to have you all here. We're just saying that it's a shame that we're not all in the same room together, but you know, one day. But uh, for the time being, this is such a such an honor. Um, so I'd like to start uh, with you, Maya. Maybe you can start off by telling us a little history and background of Zukak, uh, why you all came together to create Zukak and uh, like what is at the heart of all the work that you make? We created Zukak uh, 14 years ago, and um, the idea was to make a basis for our professional work as theater makers, actors, writers, and directors, because in Lebanon, the theater production mode is very uh, sporadic. It depends on individual initiatives most of the time. There had been a very important uh, collective initiative in the 60s, in the 60s in, in Lebanon, it was called Al Hakawati Theater. Uh, but generally, most of the work is done by individuals, and uh, somehow there's no continuation of uh, developing uh, tools and languages, etc. So we felt that this was the only way for us to be a professional as a group, and we decided to come together mostly to train and think about what kind of ideas we want to put on stage. And we didn't think that we would you know, have so many plays 
<laughs> up until now, like 14 years later. Uh, so we are basically a group of um, theater makers and we make uh, work in a non-hierarchical way. It depends on the project. Each project is directed by one or two individuals and the whole group takes part in devising. And we usually invite um, other artists also to collaborate with us to perform. Uh, and uh, also to make uh, designs, etc. We also have recently, not recently, like we have our own studio. It's a 100 seat theater that we opened four years ago and it came right after a smaller space that we had been occupying that Chris knows best. And it's a very small apartment that we opened in 2008, also springing from an understanding of how important it is to have a location in order to create any kind of performance or theater. Uh, having come from the Lebanese University where there was no, there were really no resources to rehearse. So, and this space now is holding several other artists, is also host a festival, uh, Zukak Sidewalks, that Chris and Third Angel were invited to uh, several times, a couple of times. And it's a biannual festival, and it also has um, a local component, which is called uh, uh, Focus Lebanon, which is a platform for the development, support, and diffusion of work of artists residing in Lebanon, regardless of their nationalities, artists working in the performing arts. We also have one part of our work which is very much engaged in the social realm. We do a lot of drama therapy, social theater, uh, work with communities in crisis situations. And this stems from a desire to, you know, exist as civilians in our context, not from um, um, a need to assist. We can talk more about that, but uh, it's, a, it's a big chapter of our work. And in all our creations, we try to bridge this gap between what is happening in our context, what are our personal desires, and what kind of art we want to make. So it's a big question for us. Well, thank you so much. And I have had the privilege of seeing your, your latest space, and it is stunning. It really is a beautiful space. Um, in fact, actually, yeah, let's talk a little bit about your, your, your work in crisis situations and therapy work. That's really, really fascinating. Um, is that something that you were doing from the, from the inception of Zukak or did it come later on? And if it did, why? Um, it, yeah, it started in 2006. We, we created the company actually right after the war with Israel. And we started doing certain, some interventions in schools. Uh, with children who were displaced, women also, and men sometimes. And this was developed uh, mostly by uh, the fact that one of the company members, Lamia Abazar, has also studied uh, psychology. And we developed this line of work that is a mix between clinical psychology and the framework of clinical psychology and um, the uh, experimental theater tools. And we use this. Um, this tool to create a space of expression and to um, create a blank space actually for individuals to take a position on theater because we believe that theater is in itself a way to position yourself as a performer in front of an audience, in front of your city. So we use the, the, the power that theater can give to an individual for groups of people in crisis situations to take a position within their context, within the smaller context of the group that they're working with, and hopefully later on within the context that they exist in. And the position is, can be very simple. It can be just actually standing straight and looking the person in front of you in their eyes and raising your voice. It doesn't have to be an activist political position. So there's a big, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a long way and, and the, there's a variety of ways to actually uh, exist. And one of the other examples can go as far as a group of women we've worked with who were subjected to domestic violence decided during the workshop that they don't want to be called women subjected to domestic violence, but rather women fighting for the law against domestic violence. And this is one of the tools that theater can do. And this drama therapy method is um, it can empower individuals to changed you know how they want to be seen how they want to be perceived and how they want to face the society uh, that is oppressing them in a way or another 
Wow, that's that's absolutely incredible. And you're you're still continuing this, I'm assuming, uh, all the work. And um, we're training of trainers at the moment, so we're training individuals to do this work. Wow, that's amazing. Um, and um, I'm assuming that, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's more about the the process as opposed to like the production of an end product. Am I right? Um, it's both. It depends on the group. Uh, there's another example that Renette can talk about that he's been working with uh, a group of young people also with Omar. They've had like, they really created theater pieces with them. So it depends with the group, it depends on the group, it depends on their readiness, on their desire. If they're, if they, in, you know, if, the, if at the start of the project it was a theater project or it was just a drama therapy workshop, it depends on the format. But we've had these amazing you know experiences with young people recently uh, creating theater shows and because they, they want to uh, do theater and they're amateurs they come from very different um, locations in Lebanon they might have not met were it not for the theater so you know coming from different confessional backgrounds religious backgrounds political backgrounds and meeting in the theater space and talking about these issues um, so well, that's unreal. And actually, it brings me on to my next question for you, Jeanette. Um, um, is there a crossover between... First of all, I think this question is kind of two parts. So um, I'm really curious in knowing more about like what a typical um, Zukak process is of creating work from the beginning to, to, to getting something on stage. But I'd like to add something else to that. Is, is there a, a specific crossover at all between um, your therapy theatre work and um, your more... your theatre work with, with professional actors or...? Um, um, both lines uh, uh, interact and intertwine between each other. It's like, it's a, we work as a collective and uh, uh, usually in our theatre work, we try to devise work uh, together as a group by having one person leading this uh, devising process and a director who has the final say on the uh, artistic uh, and theater uh, proposition and choices. So as a group, we always, even when we in invite collaborators, the process is a collective uh, process where we all uh, work together in a, 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 a group uh, a sense uh, and uh, uh, give different and generate different propositions uh, on a specific theme. And then uh, uh, through these propositions, we reach uh, the form and then we understand what kind of aesthetics and approach and uh, 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 propositions the play or the work is doing. So uh, within this process, uh, we usually, we use different uh, group methodologies of work. Uh, like uh, our first uh, productions used to have like uh, a collective work on the dramaturgy. Other productions use collective work on writing and devising texts. Other works were uh, only actor based. So the actors and improvisations were the base of generating materials and uh, thinking about the theme. So every time we start from this topic, which is usually a theme that is related for, uh, to us as individuals and is reflected to our social and political uh, uh, sphere. And uh, through this process from the individual to the political, there is an intersection between our artistic work and the, uh, let's say, social and psychosocial work and the drama therapy. Because uh, as, a, as an artistic practice, the individual uh, proposition, when it goes to the stage, it transforms into a political uh, 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 idea or concept or proposition. And on the, in the drama therapy, it's a similar process in a sense that when you go with small ideas that are related to your own uh, 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 challenges, uh, fears, uh, et cetera, et cetera, obstacles of uh, dealing with your uh, own uh, 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 body, with other people, with other individuals, with group, with society, with masses. It's uh, uh, through uh, transforming this individual challenge into and put it uh, on a within a group 
that adopt the same idea with you and then uh, 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 and then transform it into an artwork on stage. Uh, so this is a kind of therapeutic also uh, process. Uh, fantastic, absolutely. And I, I'm just I'm just wondering whether like the themes that you choose to work on are they are they lifted directly from the current or contemporary political environment, or are they chosen in another form and then filtered through the current political climate? Uh, where where do you start with these ideas? Yeah, so we are all uh, like individuals uh, uh, that are really concerned about what's happening about around us and we are directly affected of uh, what's happening around us. Being a theater person in Lebanon is in itself a, an, uh, an activism. <laughs> it's, a, it's an activism in itself, like you have to fight for your uh, daily living, you have to fight uh, for your, uh, to be acknowledged as, an, as a profession, as an individual, as a person who took an alternative decision that is not uh, related to the mainstream uh, 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 the mainstreams of what the system creates for you to be as a good uh, consumer. So becoming an artist in Lebanon and also everywhere in the world is uh, that you are taking a choice that you need to, that you are uh, 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 proposing some forms and ideas that intrigue critical thinking in society. And within this process, you need also to break a lot of uh, 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 juxtapositions and ideas that you are uh, that embedded in you from from the from the moment you are born within in this society and until you are raised and on which ideas you are raised. We live all within this uh, patriarchal system that uh, that puts us in 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 tables and in specific uh, uh, formats of thinking and of, of dealing in society and in our relation to the system, etc., etc. So uh, these kinds of uh, uh, ideas that are embedded uh, in us, uh, that you work on breaking within yourself, is in itself a process that you are fighting the system from your own body, fighting the system from your own thoughts, from those ideas that uh, 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 create your uh, thinking and your way of uh, uh, talking and etc cetera, etc cetera. so um, uh, so yes it's uh, sorry did I, did I answer your question or yeah, you did. I, I, I missed the other part maybe <laughs> <laughs> and actually um, it's, that's kind of led me on you start to answer my next question which is what I wanted to I'll, I'll offer it to both of you but I'll start with you Maya um, Having worked in Romania with Besna for the last five years, over a couple of projects, we have faced a number of different forms and various forms of resistance to uh, making socially driven, politically driven work. And Junaid, I think you started to answer this yourself, but um, Maya, I, from the inception of like Zukak, have you faced any forms of resistance to like kind of maybe a specific topic that you're putting on stage or maybe even the methodology or the way you work? Um. I think we try hard not to be censored. I think one of our main issues is we want to perform. We want our work to see the light. We want to reach as many people as possible. So, and this, uh, and next to that also, we don't believe in work that is, has one dimension or has one idea or can, you know, has a dogma that it's you know coming with the truth so most of our work is a reflection is a big question is um trying to shake the status quo of what people think is normal um so we we try hard not to be censored while using a lot of fiction we use mythology we use a poetry we use a musicality we use uh, singing, um, like especially in heavens, that is very present. Um, and everybody knows what we're talking about, but we don't go and attack a certain political leader because there's no point in it. We would be censored, there would be a big, um, you know, noise about it, around it. People will be with us, others will be against us, but then the work is dead. So 
basically we try to create a situation artistically where it is present, like what we want to talk about is very visible, uh, but it's not the, more, the, the main issue as well because we don't deal with daily politics, with the dirty politics of the everyday that the politicians are putting their hands in. We talk about meta politics in a way. So even though we are talking about some, some, someone wouldn't say that you're talking about a certain political leader, but actually we're talking about patriarchy as well. We're talking about leadership. We're talking about a certain concept. And this is what is interesting for us, the discussion around this, not this political leader or that, not sexuality in the taboo sense, but we, we do talk a lot about sexuality and gender. Uh, so basically in Lebanon, I think it's mostly sex, religion and politics. And all our, of our plays are about sex, religion and politics, not every single one of them. But I guess it's how we deal with them. Um, I guess some of our recent plays that deal with uh, homosexuality and uh, a lot of topics that are, you know, dealing with gender could be quite tricky. So we, we haven't submitted some of those to the censorship because this is a huge uh, topic and you can't really hide it. <laughs> um, sometimes when it comes to submitting other texts, because mostly the censorship board here is about reading our texts. They don't really necessarily come to the theater. So you can be completely naked. If no one writes about it, then it's fine. But actually it's mostly what is written that is important for them. So when they read the text, we, we play with words. We have these tricks and Junaid is a pro in that. <laughs> you know, in Arabic language, uh, you know, if you put two dots over a letter, it can be f or q, and then it can be two different words, and it can be actually a word, but it's, it's different. So it's either um, um, a typo or a different word or who knows. Uh, in other instances, we pretended like we had a whole improvisation around <laughs> Emperor and Galilean, which is a huge play by Henrik Ibsen. And it's basically, <laughs> It's basically the, it's, a, it's an improvisation around the play, but everything around it is actually talking about politics and religion, religious figures, Christianity. Oh, you know, it's it's really really very daring. But what we did is we submitted the actual play to the censorship board. So, you know, good luck reading that <laughs> first. But second, if they come to the theater, well, we were improvising because the play was set in a way that we're improvising. So we play these games because ultimately what's important for us is for the work to be presented. And um, yeah, I don't know if Junaid, you want to add something to that? Okay. I've got, I've got a matter of curious, curiosity, are you obliged, as a, as a theatre company, are you obliged to submit uh, work to the censorship board? You are. Uh, that's that's really interesting. Could, could one of you like help um, discuss that a little yeah, bit? Can, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so actually here the law is like you have to, it's a very old law actually from the 30s, 20s and even later from the past century that they renewed it during the, um, like during the Ottoman Empire, uh, Empire period. Anyway, so it's a law that says that you have to uh, apply the text to the uh, valley of Beirut, to the um, um, uh, uh, what is worthy of being uh, like governor or something? If it doesn't kind of the governor, people. yes, during the, the empire, you know, and the law they renewed it uh, lately in a different way where they said, where uh, uh, you, you submitted to the general security force in Lebanon. So basically, there is a uh, um, you know, employees at the general security who read the texts and they give their opinion. And then actually the basic uh, censorship that you have is based on three ideas, religion, sex, and politics. So if it miss anything related to religion, when they see it's related to any uh, Christian ideas or Muslim ideas, they will they will send the text because they can't take also responsibility in the general security. They will send the text into the uh, to the uh, um, you know to the representatives of the uh, uh, of the specific religion. Like they will send it to the Majlis al Islami Shia al Ala, so the the Shiite uh, uh, high the high Shiite council or the 
Maya, you want to correct my translation, <laughs> uh, or uh, or the um, or the um, you know Sunni Council or the Orthodox or Catholic Council or etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So and uh, in the politics, it's the the main thing for them is like don't mention names, don't mention names, say whatever you want, but don't mention names. And in sex is like how far this act can go, and if you are insulting someone. And as, as a religious figure or as a political figure through sexual uh, acts. So basically, this is the censorship that we have to deal with. And actually, artists in Lebanon were very brave in uh, breaking these uh, 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 censorship rules in different ways. Uh, all of them by by uh, like by finding new forms, by try finding ways of saying things loud and. After the uh, 17th of October re revolution that started like uh, uh, in 2019, uh, actually uh, nobody is submitting or dealing with the censorship anymore. Anyway, it's now it's like uh, theater is not active as it was before, but now there is something like a big taboo that was broken, and the relation between people and power is like in in a in a, um, a direct. Uh, uh, um, and confrontation. So people are uh, now we are not dealing at all at the moment with the censorship, and we reached a point where we say, okay, we are going to do whatever we want. Uh, come and uh, shut us up if you want, and we'll find ways. Okay, fantastic. Wow, that's that's really really fascinating. Um, mainly, I, we're not obliged, at least we've never been obliged to send anything in Romania to a censorship board, but um, a lot of our experience has been through funding models and, and things like that, where like town halls, small and large on a national scale, so it's actually been through the funding. Um, I'd like to move on a little bit, if that's all right. Um, I've got a question for you, Chris. Um, having worked in many different, like, uh, different artistic and theatre context internationally. Um, when you first, first came across Zukak, uh, how was their work different to the socially and politically driven work, uh, for example, in the UK or other political contexts that you've worked in? Um, I mean, in some ways, profoundly different um, around you know, the circumstances that I think have just been very clearly described through which that work is made and that it, the, the paths it has to navigate. Um, and in some ways, actually, um, not at all in terms of the processes that we've just heard described, the, um, the collaborative processes and particularly the, um, the relationship between uh, filtering out the personal through the, the choke points and the, you know, the problematic structures in society to create the work. So, I mean, for me, in, in the, not just the work of Zukak, but in Zukak as an entity, uh, as a collaborative artistic process, as a process with a clear sense of purpose, um, there's a lot to aspire to. Uh, there's a lot that feels familiar, you know, in the problems of artistic creation, irrespective of the, you know, the particular social context that the work is made in. I mean, between the artists who are making the work, um, there's a lot of uh, familiarity in that dynamic. Um, but equally, you know, there are certain things that Zukat do in a way which are, which, you know, as, as we've just heard, things that may be, they have to do or that they began having to do that have become kind of really effective parts of the art that the company makes which are incredibly inspiring um so you know for me the the kind of enforced lack of directness in subject in expression combined with I think something that Zukat do particularly well which is the the directness of speaking about human experience I think is a really fascinating thing for an outsider to observe and to become familiar with in terms of what it tells you about how to speak about politics in your particular context so that 
um, directness of form that in sort of freer um, areas of the world, if you like, in terms of artistic expression, is often kind of uh, dismissed as naive or treated with a certain kind of embarrassment is actually a really effective tool when it's allied with a kind of a way of expressing yourself that has to go around the obstacles that are put in its way. And Zukat managed to kind of combine an absolute uh, sincerity and directness that I think in other hands and in other places is seen as kind of a little uh, unfashionable, uh, but they combine it with an absolute human truth and a commitment to kind of research and to the translation of not only their own, but other people's experiences in their wider society into the work in a way that shows that, you know, that the, um, the attitude towards that directness in other places is a problem with the artists in those places. It's not a problem with that form or that mode of expression. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. This is not my way of saying that I wish in any way that I worked under the social or political strictures or the lack of resources or the uh, social instability or the, fr you know, living with the, the everyday fractures in society that Zukak have to work in. I just think that there is a, um, a blueprint here for a combination of the personal, the political, the usefully reactive to a fractured society and the formal that is, um, you know, I mean, their, their test and testament to that is not just Zukak's success within Lebanon, it's their success kind of outside of, outside of their own country as well. So, I mean, I guess that's a short way of saying that I find the work incredibly inspiring. <laughs> A Do long I'm, way, rather. A long <laughs> way of saying that I find the work. The short way of saying that is I find the work incredibly inspiring. Yeah. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. I think there is something definitely, I think there's something incredibly inspiring in the directness of the human experience and of like making sure that story is told because um, that's not a compromise in any shape or form. I think it's actually incredibly intelligent and incredible. And it's actually a very similar, it mirrors quite similarly over here as well in Romania of how theatre was made um, during uh, the end of the, before the revolution, of how language and stories were adapted to kind of curb the censorship of the, of the, the, the secret police. Um, well, just to, just to say again, that there's, um, you know, speaking from my position, sitting in Manchester in a country that, while it has its problems, doesn't try and politically do the things to art that Lebanon or Romania do. There is a, you know, one thing you have to be aware of, particularly, you know, speaking from a very privileged position within that country, never mind that country being a privileged place to be, there is a temptation to kind of exoticize and um, uh, almost glorify that struggle in a way that sometimes gets in the in the way of the art. Um, so what we, you know, when I talk about admiration for the work, I'm talking about admiration for the fact that the work exists in the form it does having taken the journey there through the obstacles in its way rather than you know rather than that it's the obstacles that create the work yeah absolutely thank you so much for that um i'm very keen for us to move on to uh talk a little bit about heavens if that's all right uh would love to know because i i found it a beautiful deeply moving experience a very beautiful piece and i was i was absolutely besotted with the musicality of the piece um and Maya you mentioned earlier which I'll come to a bit later about how the the, the important role of music and singing uh in the piece before we come on to that maybe it'd be a good place to start um maybe Janae you could talk a little bit about um, the initial starting point of Heavens and what made you want to make it as a collective uh and maybe give a bit of political historical context around the, the content of the piece yes so uh before I start talking about Heavens, if you allow me, I would like to dedicate Heavens and the streaming of Heavens tonight to all those, uh, to the beloved of the disappeared 
in all over the world, especially in Lebanon after the civil war. Uh, the people who had disappeared, disappeared uh, because of the wars taking place everywhere uh, in different countries, in Syria, in Libya, in Yemen, in all those places that they are still uh, drowning and sinking in uh, unending fights and wars. And also uh, to those people who, the beloved people of the, uh, those who lost people now during the pandemic and for people who are still fighting with different diseases, especially cancer. And uh, so uh, this play uh, talks uh, about the missing. And the missing for us is, was the starting point of, uh, of the play. Uh, and it was the starting point of dealing with our own history in Lebanon. So Lebanon uh, was uh, had a, a long uh, civil war uh, history that started in 1975 and uh, officially ended in 1990-91. Uh, but the consequences of the war continued till this moment. And the play uh, uh, tried to deal with history from the position of the individual within these huge uh, events. And uh, so we tried to tackle uh, uh, the problem of history through that point, where in the play, where you see that uh, all the dates, you have two dates in the play only, all uh, actresses uh, were born at the moment of the play, so it was recorded in 2014. So they say I was born in, with the date in 2014. Uh, looking back, uh, uh, getting like they were born today. Looking back, backwards to the uh, to the history, and uh, everyone who were missed in the play were missed in 1991. In uh, the uh, by the ending of the civil war that ended with this amnesty law that uh, resolved the war in a way that gave privilege to the warlords and uh, deleted the all crimes that happened uh, without giving uh, the right uh, for people who have this who still have people who have disappeared or uh, for victims. Uh, without giving the, them the right to know what happened exactly. Uh, to give a very fast, uh, I will try to have to make it fast, the uh, glimpse on the history of Lebanon. It's, Lebanon is a country which was based on, uh, like it was one uh, a place in this whole region that was uh, ruled by the Ottoman Empire. Okay, so, and before the Ottoman Empire, empire different civilizations past and always within these civilizations and empires you had uh, the whole region were dissected in different ways by giving uh, 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 the power of ruling the regions or the areas within the empire uh, to uh, princes or people who are related to the uh, uh, to the uh, system so the Khilafah system that is part of the whole Islamic period was the system in the Ottoman Empire. Uh, Lebanon and different regions in the area during the empire or the last in the last years of the empire, they had uh, privileges. They took privileges in some areas. So there was something called this Lebanese mountain, the whole region, where many where different minorities were living in this region. The whole region is uh, Muslim, Sunnis, while you have small minorities of uh, Druze, uh, Christian Maronite, Christian Orthodox, uh, Shiite, etc., uh, took refuge actually or lived in this in the mountain. So during the empire, this mountain took a privilege, uh, had a privilege by dealing with this, and the privileges were translated by giving some key persons the right or the uh, power to collect taxes, and then these key persons became the people who actually deals with the uh, Khalifa or with the with the uh, main authority and the uh, Khilafah system uh, and the emperor. So and uh, so they give the taxes and they collect the taxes. And the same system was translated later into the feudal system when you have these people who had the privilege, they have the power over the uh, areas 
and then uh, the feudal system was applied. And then after the failure uh, and the downfall of the Ottoman Empire, Empire and after the uh, First World War, uh, we had the colonial uh, colonization of the British and the French colonization over the area. And here they had this very smart, great idea of dissecting the earth and the region into uh, nations, okay, into areas where they give some minorities, religious minorities, privileges by translating the privileges into nations. So you had Lebanon with a uh, with privileges for Christians and other places like, and Lebanon was created on this kind of privilege. So these families who had the privileges before in history, they became like the kind of uh, uh, confessional leaders because the system adopted in Lebanon was a confessional system. So they became a confessional leaders. So they have a very long uh, uh, authority in history and they have now, until now, this authority over the people where everyone, where every confession have this one leader, which is the father, the main uh, pope of the confession the political pop of the confession. And uh, this person shares the power with the other confessional leaders who were in fight during the civil war, became warlords, and then found a the uh, amnesty law that put them again in power until this moment in history. And here, if you want, we can refer to the uh, intervention by uh, Mr. Nizar Sari. Nizar Sari is a a lawyer, a civil uh, society activist, and the founder of Legal Agenda in Lebanon. He joined us for a conversation uh, uh, before around this topic, and it will be great if we can have his uh, opinion at this moment. شكرا لزواء وعلى المسرحية أكيد يعني يمكن أحلى شيء بالمسرحية لما حدا بيسأل هيدا قانون عفوا على 15 ألف سنة بيرجع بقوله لا 15 سنة بس هو بيعبر فعلا وهيدا شيء يمكن ما حما نعرفه الدستور الحقيقي للبنان مش الدستور ولا اتفاق الطائف الدستور يلي يعني العمل بعد الحرب هو قانون العفو هيدا اللي كرس النظام السياسي الحقيقي بلبنان مش النظام الشكل مش النظام يلي بنحكى عنه بالكتب النظام يلي تطبق بالحقيقة أو بالممارسة ليش؟ هيدا العفو يلي طلع مش بس أنه عفا كل الجرائم والمجازر الكبيرة وإلى آخره وهمش الضحايا وما تحق لأي ضحية هيدا مجد بالزعمة وخبرنا انه القيمة العليا بالنظام الجاي هي الزعيم وهيدا الشيء كتير واضح ببين من الجرائم يلي بتستثنى من العفو بالوحدة وتسعين ما حدا ناقش بالضحايا ما حدا ناقش بالمجازر ما حدا ناقش بجرائم ضد الإنسانية وبجرائم الحرب كلها يتا هيدا عفيت في واحد بيطلع بيقلن بس نحن بدنا نستثني من العفو الجرائم القتل ضد الزعماء ورجال الدين وبيطلع نائب بيقول له طيب ليش؟ انه ليه؟ انه انه وين مساواة؟ ليش الجريمه ضد الزعيم لا تغتفر وكل الجرائم والمجازر تغتفر؟ فبيطلع وقت رئيس المجلس النيابي وبيقول لانه هيدول رموز وطنيه وبالتالي عم بيعتبر أن القيمة العليا بالنظام الجاي مش الإنسان نعرف أوروبا بعد الحرب عملوا جرائم ضد الإنسانية حتى يأكدوا أن الإنسان هو القيمة العليا هو الزعيم القيمة العليا بنظام ما بعد الحرب بنظام ما بعد الوحدة وتسعين وبهيدا المحل نحن ما عشنا بديمقراطية من الوحدة وتسعين لليوم نحن عشنا بنظام زعماء بنظام كاريزماتي مبني على كاريزما الزعيم على ذاكره الابطال ابطال الحرب 
امني زعماء السلم وبيفعل قانون العفو هيدا هو الدستور الحقيقي يلي انحط بلبنان دستور عفو ابيض غير مشروط لك حتى ما حدا عذب حاله يخبر المفقودين شو صار باهاليهم قبل ما يكسب العفو فكان هيدا عفو فعلا عطى الزعماء فالغنائم يلي غنوها بالحرب ضلت لهم وفتحت لهم الزعامه باب لغنائم ما بعد الحرب وبهيدا المحل المسرحيه بمحلها نحن ال 30 سنه الماضيه انخطفت بال 91 خطف تاريخ شعب وتقدم شعب وتطور شعب واقتصاد شعب من ال 91 هيدا المخطوف مش بس شاب وشبان ولا 17 الف مفقود كل الشعب اللبناني انخطف بحياته بحيويته من وراء قانون العفو هيدا ومن وقتها يعني حتى بال اذا اذا فتنا بالمسرح بلشت الكوميديا ما كان في تراجيديا بعد الحرب لك ما حدا جاء عباله يبكي ما حدا جاء عباله يبكي على الضحايا إذا بنضلنا نضحك لحتى ما نتذكر لحتى نفكر أنه كل شيء منيح وكل شيء رائع وبلش الشونسونية والكوميديا تتذكروا بعد ما مات الحريري كيف تحولت حياتنا تراجيديا أنه كان مطلوب نتذكر الزعيم يلي نقتل بس ما بنتذكر كل الضحايا طبعا الحرب هيدي بدنا نعمل كوميديا لحتى الأبطال يرجعوا يحكموا مثل ما بدنا وفعلا بلش كل النهب والسرقه وصار في نوع من الديل بين المجتمع والزعماء انه ايه سرقوا قد ما بدكم بالاخر نحن مغلوبين على امرنا نحن مجتمع كثير ضعيف ما هو قادر يقاوم فسرقوا خذوا المال العام كله لكم بس خلونا مجال انه نحن كمان نخالف القانون بالارض تبعنا بالعقار تبعنا نعمر مبنى مخالف نجيب عامله ونستغلها صار هيدا الديل انا اعطيني حريتي الكامله بالشيء الخاص فيي وانت انهاب الدوله قد ما بدك وبالمنتهى بالشغلتين كانت القانون القوانين كلياتها عم تندعس بكل محل لا المدينه بقى بقى جميله لانه خلفنا كل القوانين تبع البناء وخلف وعندنا كل العمليه وضلينا بهيدا الديل انه انا الخاص لإلي والعام لك زعيم نحن كلنا لاحقينه وما عندنا هويه غير انه نحن تابعين لهالزعيم والى اخره لحديه ما صارت 2019 واكتشفنا فجاه اللي كنا نسميه انه هو ملكيه خاصه طلع عم نحطه بالبنك، البنك عم بياخذه ويحطه بمصرف لبنان، الزعيم عم بينهبه وبالتالي كان عم بينهب مالنا اللي كنا مفكرين انه هيدا ما له علاقه في هيدا حاطينه على جنب وبالتالي هيدا الديل خرب بتشرين الاول 2019 لانه اكتشفنا انه الفساد يلي كنا مفكرين نعطيه يا لحتى نحن نعيش اجتاحنا الفساد اجتاحنا اليوم والفساد يعني الزعامات ما بس حكموا العام ولكن حتى حكموا الخاص حتى حكموا كل واحد حسابه بالمصرف يلي كان معتبره محمي بالسرية وإلى آخره فهيدا الاشتياح وهيدا التفليس العام لكل الدولة فرجتنا يلي ما فرجونا إياه لأنه ما عطوا حقوق للمفقودين المقابر الجماعية يلي كان مفروض لما تنحفر تفرجينا بشاعة الزعماء هيدا الشيء ما سامحوا فيه بشاعة الزعماء شفناها لما فلس البلد لما شفنا كيف اجتاحوا كل واحد منا وكيف اخذوا من كل واحد منا كل شيء لحتى يمولوا الفساد طبعا وبالتالي هيدا النهار يلي كانت الصدمه الكبرى انه اكتشفنا الفساد عم بيجتاحنا كلياتنا وبلشت الصرخه تتزق بالساحات الشتائم كان عندها وظيفه كان عندها وظيفة اجتماعية أساسية هي تهديم الأصنام هيدا الشيء ما حدا اليوم بيقولوا أنه عم تمسوا بالرموز الوطنية نحن اللي بدنا نمس فيه هو الرموز الوطنية واللي بدنا ندمره هو هيدا الدستور بالذات لأنه إذا ما تدمر هيدا الدستور ما رح نقدر نبني دستور ديمقراطي لبعدين 
وبالتالي هيدا كانت الهدف تبعه لهيدا المحل فبهالمحل يلي قالته وداد صحيح انه الحركه المقاومه الاصيله يلي عملوها اهالي المفقودين على 30 سنه وكل الوقت عم بيصرخوا لا هيدول مجرمين هيدول مجرمين هيدول قتلونا وما ما عم بيعطونا حقيقه وبدنا المعرفه شو معناتها المعرفه؟ هو انه نعرف هن شو عملوا وهن شو شو كذا يلي كانوا عم بيخبوها هذا كله فضح مع التفليس الكبرى يلي روحت كل شيء الجواب تبعهم ما كان اعتراف ما كان انه ركعوا قدام الشعب واعتذروا ما كان انه حاولوا يردوا المال لحتى الشعب يغفر لهم هيدا ما حصل بثقافتنا مش موجود لانه في 15 الف سنه مثل ما قال بالمسرحي من العفو وبالتالي كل شيء دوروا عليه عفو عام من اول يوم ثوره طلعوا بلشوا يحكوا بالعفو العام عم نحكي عن تفليسه عم نحكي عن ارتكابات عن جرائم عن تفليس بلد كامل عن محاسبه عن استرداد اموال منهوبه بس بالحد كله على جنب ببلش العفو العام بتتذكروا كيف وقت الثوار ما مضى هو هيدي الشغله وتعطل البرلمان مره ومرتين من وراء العفو العام ورجعوا لما خفت الامور وانعمل الكورونا رجعوا يحكوا بالعفو العام ورجعوا حطوه مثل ما هو مؤخرا بلد مفلس وكورونا والناس عم تنصرف من شغله والسكن ما فيه وهن النواب ما عم بيعملوا شيء الا قانون العفو على شهر كامل بيجتمعوا اكثر من 50% من النواب من الصبح للمساء ليناقشوا كيف بدهم يعملوا ديل على العفو العام بيناتهم وبالتالي ومقسمينا 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 على ثلاث فئات فينا يعني يلي هي كل وحده طايفه وبالتالي هيدا بعد ما يعني قانون العفو كان في كثير اشياء لحتى يكون في عفو ذاتي مثل ما عملوا بال 91 هيدا اسقطتها الثوره وصار كل واحد عم يحكي عن جماعه تيرمم زعامته بهيدي الجماعه هن اصنام مكسوره عم بجربوا يرمموا هالاصنام المكسوره لحتى يرجعوا يعملوا بس نحن بنعرف انه التاريخ بيقول انه الاصنام متى ما تكسرت ما بتترمم وبالتالي هيدا القانون لعفو ما مرق بعد اخر جلسه رجعوا اختلفوا بين بعض والامل انه ما يمروا لما بتكون العمليه صارت عمليه بس ترميم الزعامه بينما كل المجتمع منسي معناتها كمان عم بيرجعوا يحضروا حالهم لنظام زعاماتي عن جديد من دون ما يكون عنده اي ابعاد اجتماعيه لك اشتهينا بهالعفو العام يحكوا الناس الفقراء اللي اضطرت تسرق من وراء الفقر ناس اضطرت تعمل دعاره هذا كله مش معفي المعفي هن ثلاث فئات اسلاميين يلي بخصوا طائفه معينه الى اخره والمهربين المخدرات والتجار والعملاء وعمليا هدول ثلاث فئات من اخطر الفئات بينما كل الفئات الاخرى ما كانت عم تستفيد من العفو فكل هيدي العمليه بتاكد يلي كان عمل بال91 عم بكرر نفسه باشكال مختلفه لحتى يرجعوا يفرضوا نفس الدستور اللي هو دستور حكم الزعم مش صحيح انه نحن بحكم طائفي نحن باسوا حكم طائفي نحن بحكم الزعماء الطائفيين وبالتالي هيدا مستوى اخر من ال... من الحكم واليوم هيدا المطلوب انه نهده وندمره فبهيدا المحل العفو العام مثل ما هو الدستور هو العدو الاول بالنسبه لنا وصحيح انه كان هو الضربه الكبرى بال 91 ونامل انه ما يكون الضربه بال 2020 انه ترجع الحركه الاجتماعيه تاخذ بعدها التدمير هيدا الدستور اللي انفرض علينا شكرا لك Okay, fantastic. Um, the next question I'd like to move on to uh, will be for, for I'll ask you, Maya. Um, 
was it a collective decision to um, choose to tell the story of heavens from the perspective of a chorus of three women? Was it a collective decision? Was it that was was that the initial um, idea from the set go? Um, if you could tell us a bit more about that, it'd be amazing. Uh, yeah, it was somehow um, clear that it's it would be uh, told by chorus of women somehow because women are voice when it comes to to periods of war and conflict the women somehow hold down the, the home they are there they wait they hold the base and when it comes to all the stories of the disappeared it's always the mothers the sisters the wives who hold these images of people who have gone missing and go and ask for them and like you know it also has a mythological um, perspective like people who wait for this to come back it's the women who hold the fortress when the men go to war and somehow there is very powerful and very very but very powerful because they become the holders of the collective story of the home of what's happening at home so um yeah it was it was i think it was Junaid's idea and we all agreed <laughs> because it was very clear that of course the women, group of women. And of course, um, so uh, one thing that a lot, not a lot of people take into consideration is that with any war, um, the largest number of casualties or people affected in various different ways are always, I think there's something like 80, 86 or 87% of people affected directly are women and children. And I thought that was immediately very striking in the piece. Um, and it is something that people never, at least a lot of conversations we've been having for a project that we're currently preparing. Um, that's something that not everyone takes into consideration. And I think that really makes the, the story stand out. Uh, I am aware of the time, so I'm just gonna um, quickly move on if that's all right with everybody else. Um, Chris, I wanna, I wanna ask you a quick question about um, what do you think the role of theatre has in helping deal with traumatic instances in a given society's recent past? Um, do you think theatre has the capacity to ignore, ignite or provoke real change? And I ask that because I know in a lot of your work as well, you've dealt with a number of various um, uh, tragedies that may have been national, um, such as um, the mysteries with uh, the arena bombing in Manchester, uh, you touch on that in, in the piece, um, or for example, um, uh, pieces that uh, and, and tragedies that also hit smaller communities. Um, it's a really difficult one, isn't it? I mean, there's there's there are different there are different kinds of trauma, and you have to acknowledge your position within that trauma. And uh, for me, uh, you know, that governs not only how you speak about it, but whether you should speak about it. Um, for example, in Britain at the moment, there are there are all sorts of kind of societal traumas, a lot of which maybe mirror the the kind of uh, societal trauma and protest that, say, the US is going through at the moment around race, around policing, around things like that. And I think you have to have a very clear idea if you are dealing with that of whether and how you should be speaking about it so there's the kind of the, the, there's the kind of awareness of the usefulness of your own voice in dealing with trauma um, which has to be kind of paramount in the decisions that you're making but then there's the very specific uh, traumas that occur as um, symptoms of a global uh problem on a local level so you bring up the um the bombing of the manchester arena during the ariana grande concert you know which i certainly felt um qualified to talk about being from manchester and being in manchester when that happened but also you know again have to use very carefully to examine the specific bits of Manchester and being Mancunian that it's my kind of my that, that I have the ability to talk about and make that 
identity useful, make the intersection of my identity as a Mancunian, of who I am as a person and of that particular event kind of useful and to move forward a set of ideas rather than to simply kind of replicate or represent an event or get everyone to agree that it was terrible you know so I guess there's the there's the trauma that you deal with and there's the trauma that you cause you know or there's the there are the, there's the trauma caused by the systems that you're part of. And I think you have to have a very, very clear idea of your position in relationship to that before you even start making any work about it. You have to have a very, very clear idea of what the point is of that work and whether that work is useful, whether it contributes kind of in an unhelpful way to just a general presentation and dissection of traumatic experience or whether it is possible for you personally to pick out strands of that that um, identify and help to clarify particular areas of social conflict that you might be useful in bringing to light and they might be things uh, depending on what your position is they might be things that are that you are responsible for as much as things that have been perpetrated on you and a kind of a, a kind of attempt at an honest reckoning with responsibility for trauma is as probably as important, if not more so than a, uh, a revelation of trauma from where I'm standing. Yeah. Does that I mean, make sense? No, absolutely. And I think this idea of responsibility as well is the other side of, not the other side of the coin, but it's, uh, it's I feel at least working in between the Romania and the UK, uh, that is often forgotten. But I do feel that there is a, a more of a consciousness coming about that. About that, so that's 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 really exciting. That actually, it's into- not an admission. I mean, I would say that to do that is not an admission of guilt. It's not useful to make that work as an admission of guilt and complicity. Absolutely. I mean, obviously, honesty about that is really important, but you, you know, you have to make work that moves that dialogue on, that moves that situation on, that acknowledges your position within it, but doesn't actually ask the audience for kind of reassurance that you you talking about this or your position within this is okay because that's a waste of their energy absolutely and i think you chose the word reassurance perfectly there uh, and that actually feeds us into a question from the audience from karim um is theater still a political art or is it just an artistic elitist tool to express political ideas and visions? And I'd like to open that to all three of you. Uh, maybe Chris, if you want to start and then Maya and Janae, you can uh, jump in as well and contribute to that idea. I, mean, I, I would imagine Janae and Maya will have far more interesting things to say than me, but I, that is the big question, isn't it? And I would say, uh, yes, absolutely, it can be. Um, <clears throat> it can it can step away from kind of the thing about political theater is quite often what it is is it's what it's trying to do i'm setting up a huge straw man here but i i i think i i'm justified in generalizing you know what a lot of stuff is trying to do is simply say the simple truth in a, is to say the simple truth in a clever way for clever people and that is not that is not useful. Um, that level of analysis is um, probably the enemy of effectiveness. If if it's just about um, displaying that power of of analysis, but I think what moves us away from that is a very clear idea of the utility of a particular piece of theatre. And I think we can absolutely make political work that acknowledges the position of the artist the particular context uh, in the society that they're in and is also useful in prompting conversations that can move towards change absolutely and and Janae or Maya would you like to jump in there um, 
that answered Kareem's question. Ma Maya, do you want to start? Um, yeah, I would say that mostly it's, I agree with what Chris is saying, and it's mostly work, because this kind of work is relevant when it asks questions and leads people to talk about things that they don't necessarily talk about in a certain way after they leave the theater space. And to be faced with things that they don't want to be faced with and to open up conversations that are difficult, difficult to the artists and the audience. So yes, of course, this is the kind of theater that is political and relevant and is not preaching to the choir, you know, and this is, I agree with, with Chris that it doesn't have to be talking to people who know exactly what you're talking about. It's rather pushing people to places that are uncomfortable and pushing yourself as an artist to uncomfortable places. Yeah, exactly. I would add from here is like the understanding of political theater from a country to another uh, differs as an, uh, as uh, how to identify it. So. Uh, when we say political theater, it's not a specific form, but it's a how you position yourself, your artwork, your thoughts, your text, your word, your body on stage. Like today, if you, in a specific context, if you wear something uh, uh, that uh, applies to your I, uh, individual identity and uh, um, uh, differences from your surrounding and walk in the street is a political act in itself. So when you have a space uh, like the theater as a person, as an individual, uh, as a theater practitioner, then how you deal with this space, with time, with bodies on stage, with words, with, uh, you have the opportunity to create something not unidimensional, multidimensional, that deals with complexity, that open questions. This is a political act in itself. So even if you need to say that this is not political, apolitical, but in itself, in a specific context, the apolitical choice is political uh, in itself, because it's a choice that you need to question the political discourse of that context. So it is a way of uh, dealing with your context and surrounding, yeah. So um, yeah, it will always stay alive and whatever you do will be political in that sense. Thank you so much. Unfortunately, we've reached the time. Uh, I've got a million more questions for you all and there are a few other questions from the audience. So I apologize that we didn't get those out right now live, but um, maybe we can send them to Maya, Chris and Junaid and we can um, get those answers later on um, to, to the people that asked. But I just want to say it's been an absolute pleasure once again and a privilege to to moderate this discussion with all three of you. Um, you're a massive inspiration to all of us and um, it was a real honor. Um, and just keep fighting the fight, I think. Um, yeah, does anybody have any cl uh, closing reflections or thoughts that you'd like to share? No, it's, uh, thank you so much. And uh, you both said that it was a privilege for you to uh, uh, be within this panel. It's a privilege for me too to be with you. And thank you for inviting us for this uh, opportunity. It's a great opportunity to meet again, Chris, after all of this time within these times and to meet you, Nico, again, and to have this platform. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And once again, thank you everybody for joining and uh, joining us. There'll be another event um, as part of GLADS in two weeks time. Um, so keep, keep posted. Thank you very much. Thank you.